All right, so this should be the last video as far as this build is concerned. In the last video, when I added the plants, I said that I was concerned that I didn't have enough light to sustain life as far as the plants were concerned. So I did add those two compact fluorescents in the back, but they're sort of useless. And I did say that I was gonna order a Jungle Dawn, uh, which has now come in as of this morning. And I also need to replace the UVB bulb because this one's about 10 months old and it's probably starting to wear out. So we're gonna add, finish off this, this build by adding the lighting. And it actually is a perfect timing because Mariah from Reptif files just released an article I think two days ago where she was just talking about you know how to support plant life in your vivariums and we're gonna piggyback off that a little bit I'll share the article with you. of course I'll link it in the description as well and we're gonna just talk a little bit more I'll use John Courtney Smith's fire book just to explain why just having a UV bulb and a halogen bulb is not gonna work for plants we'll talk about that and of course we'll set them up so let's open up the box I don't know if I've ever mentioned, but I get all of my reptile equipment or especially all my Arcadia equipment from Reptiles R Us, which is a reptile supply company in Oshawa, Ontario. They're fantastic. They always have everything that I always need. So I'm, I'm really grateful that we have such a great supply company. I'll throw the link in the description if you're not familiar with them. So let's see what we have here. I ordered some sticky foot gold for my geckos. We won't talk about that today. All right, so these are the two items we're gonna talk about in today's video. So the first one is the 6% uh, T8 UVB bulb. So this is the one I'm gonna use. I like the T8, well, the reason I got T8 is because I want an 18 inch bulb and that's uh, the, the T5s don't come in the 18 inch length, so that's what this is. If you are not familiar with, or you're not sure what bulb to use, for the species that you have, go to Arcadia. Hopefully I'm showing a screenshot of that on the screen right now. Arcadia lighting guide, type in your species. It'll give you a few different options based off the basking height. So that's why I went with the 6%. I could have gone with the shade dweller as well, but I thought that was a little bit small for considering the height of the enclosure. So we're gonna put this in. And then here is the 15 watt Jungle Dawn. So again, I went with the 15 watt because it's only 11 inches or 12 inches long, which the top of the enclosure is only 24 inches. So it just will fit perfectly. And uh, let's hook it up. All right, so I'm just gonna put the bulb in this fixture here. This is just honestly just a fixture from Home Depot that fits these T8s or these 18 inch T8s. And I never throw out my old bulbs, by the way, because eventually I will invest in a solar meter so I can go back and test my old bulbs and see if they have any UV left in them. So I always hold on to them. And the other thing that I use is one of these just Arcadia reflectors, just a really cheap, I think it's like $12 or so. And it just fits in the, into this fixture like this. It's just really simple. It does, it's not a perfect fit, but it does this job well. All it does is reflect the light back into the enclosure. Because like I said last time, you do lose a lot either through reflection upwards or from the light just diffusing up out of the enclosure, as well as through the screen. The screen does bounce back a lot of the light. So you wanna do everything you can to keep that UV in there. So let's turn that guy on. It's not gonna be any real difference. That looks about the same, which makes sense. So now let's set up the Jungle Dawn. Okay, so as I've said before, the Jungle Dawn provides just this incredibly extreme amount of light. It's so awesome. I have put it on my day gecko enclosure as well, so you can go watch that. It is really a mind-blowing amount of light that they produce, so it's really, really cool. So we're gonna turn it on, and uh, but let's make the effect a little cooler. I'm gonna close my curtains, turn off the lights, and then we're gonna check this out. All right, are you guys ready? Three, two, one. All right, that is just so much better. It's incredible how bright that is. It's actually very tough to pick up on the camera. It kind of, with the ISO settings, it can be tough to show how bright this light is. But anyway, this should help me out a lot in terms of uh, the life of the plants. You can see that the top half of the enclosure is really, really bright. The bottom half is still really shaded, which is what I wanted. It's definitely more bright down here than it was before, but there is still some nice dark shade and then obviously in the hide is nice and dark as well. So that looks totally great. I'm happy with that. Maybe we can get a little closer shot. So there's the Jungle Dawn right there and the UV is just right here. You can't hardly see it. Uh, it's just gonna be covered by the border of the enclosure, but that is awesome. And I know the Python's gonna look so cool under this light and I'll, of course, I'll make sure to include some videos in this video of him 
uh, underneath the light. So let's get into why it is important to have a LED or a full spectrum light when it comes to plant health. Have you ever spent 20 minutes talking about light bulbs and then realized you didn't hit record? That is exactly what just happened to me. I've already recorded this in my room. I guess by myself, I'm talking to nobody and the camera's not recording me. Okay, so let me do it again. Now that the Jungle Dawn is installed and ready to go, I want to explain why I added it and why the importance of it, especially when it comes to plant life. And like I said earlier, this is a timely video because Mariah from Reptophiles, just a couple days ago for me, probably a week ago or so for you whenever you're seeing this, she just posted a video on planting your vivariums and how to allow your plants to thrive. So I'll link that in the description and she goes into way more detail than I'm gonna go into here. So I highly recommend going and check it out. It's a pretty short read and it clears up some questions that you might have and of course, if you want to go into super detail, you should pick up Fire by John Courtney Smith. I will post Arcadia Reptiles link in the description so you can go check that book out. That is where I get all my information regarding heating and light. So I think I'll just start by asking a simple question. When I say reptile lighting, when I say think of a reptile light bulb, what type of bulb do you think of? I think many of us will gravitate towards UVB bulbs, because we know how important they are. They are vitally important. Many species in captivity die without them, so we know how important that section of the electromagnetic spectrum is. But there's a whole bunch of other spectrum, or other sections of the electromagnetic spectrum that is also very, very important. Now, I guess you could argue that it is not as important as UV, because without UV, animals will die. Without visible light and without infrared, they won't necessarily die. But again, we're looking at wanting to increase our care and constantly replicating nature. So let's look at this. So I'm gonna put the electromagnetic spectrum on the screen so we can get a good shot of it. This is the energy that we receive from the sun. This is what makes it to the, the earth from the sun. This is the energy that we get, the energy that the reptiles in the wild get, and it's the energy that we're trying to replicate in our vivariums. Now, I think many of us assume that if you have a UVB bulb, you have sufficient lighting, that you have the appropriate lighting for your reptile. And again, I'm not saying if you just have UVB, that's bad, but there is a whole section of the electromagnetic spectrum that you're missing. So there's a lot more potential to grow there. So just a really quick breakdown of this electromagnetic spectrum. Anything between 400 and 700 nanometers, that's the wavelength of the energy that's coming from the sun or the wavelength of the photons. Anything between that band is visible light. That's what you and I can see. That's the rainbow. When you look in the sky, you get the rainbow. You get everything from your reds up into your blues. The shorter the wavelength, the more blue the color is going to be. And the longer the wavelength, the closer to reds it's going to be. Now, if you go too long beyond the 700 meter nanometer point, you're going to get into infrared. And that is a color of light that we can't see. It goes beyond our visible light, but we feel that as heat. So our bodies, humans, as well as reptiles, interpret that wavelength of energy as warmth and as heat. Just like we talked about two weeks ago when I added the halogen bulb into this enclosure. Now, if you get shorter than 400 nanometers wavelength, now you're getting into the ultraviolet rays. So again, this is now a type of light that we can't see. It's too short for our eyes to pick up on, and we are not able to detect it visually, but we can detect it other ways. We detect it through our skin. You get a suntan, that's from your UV. We're producing vitamin D, again, that's from the UV. Reptiles, no different. That's how they interact with ultraviolet rays is by producing vitamin D as well as a few other things that are vitally important. We're not gonna get into that today. So the way I had this enclosure set up is I had the UVB bulb and the halogen bulb. So I had a UVB producing bulb and an infrared producing bulb, and I'm sort of bookending the electromagnetic spectrum. There's the whole chunk in the middle, the visible light, that's not being provided to the animal. And again, you can it's gonna be a little bit confusing because you can say, hey, there's definitely visible light because I can see it coming from the UVB bulb as well as the halogen, and I'm gonna get into that in a little bit. So just keep that in the back of your mind for a second. Before we go down that rabbit hole, I just wanna quickly explain and, and give you a good reason for why providing visible light is so important. Now. The first thing really is just if we're trying to replicate the sun as best we can, then we do need to be providing a good source of visible light. We can't just bookend the electromagnetic spectrum and say that's the sun. We're missing the section in the middle. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, is it has health benefits for our reptiles. So your question might be, well, what benefits does providing a good quantity of visible light have to our reptiles? And my answer is, I don't know which I know is a terrible answer. There is something that goes on, and again, if you just read John's books or listen to John talk, and he, in the last podcast I talked about it, maybe I'll just link it in the corner there, we discussed the quantity of visible light 
adding into the enclosure and how much more energy that provides the animals. Light is energy. So when you provide more energy into the enclosure, it goes into the animal and they become more active. There's still lots of questions to understand what is going on there and how the animals are utilizing visible light. My day gecko constantly basks under her jungle dawn light. She's right up against that high intensity light and she likes it. So I don't have a great answer for that besides there is something interesting going on there, but all you have to remember is that it is adding energy into the enclosure. So energy going into the reptile is going to mean they have more energy and they're healthier beings. But the simpler and the third reason is we're talking about plants. Plants go through a process called photosynthesis, which you are well aware of. It's where they take light from the sun and turn it into glucose so they can grow. Plants use the visible light spectrum for that process. They don't use ultraviolet light or infrared light to do that. They need light between 400 and 700 nanometers to allow that process to take place. So you might have an enclosure with a nice heat bulb and a UVB lamp and you put all these beautiful plants into the enclosure and then in a few months the plants start to wilt and brown, the leaves die off and you go, what's going on here? I have all this nice light in the enclosure and the plants aren't doing well. Well, what you've done is you've bookended the electromagnetic spectrum and for a plant, that's the worst thing you can do because the middle section of the, of the spectrum is what they need in order to grow and in order to create energy from light. And even worse than that is the UV rays and the infrared rays are actually very harsh on the plant. And if they don't have the proper spectrum of light between 400 and 700 to go through photosynthesis, they will not be robust enough to handle those harsh wavelengths and they'll start to you know, leaves will tie off, you'll get UVB burn, the plants will start to succumb to those harsh wavelengths. So they absolutely need that visible light spectrum in order to thrive. And that's exactly what the LED Jungle Dawn provides. Each of the LEDs on this bulb are all identical. It's not a pattern of different colored LEDs. They're all exactly the same. They produce a white light and they provide full spectrum visible light, meaning they are providing the exact light plants need to survive. All right, so that answers the question about why it's important to provide visible light, why it's important that we're not bookending the spectrum, why we are trying to complete it as much as possible. But that does walk us into some confusing territory. So I'm going to do my best to explain this to the best of my abilities, and hopefully it helps you understand exactly how to interpret light and heat. The best piece of advice I got on this was from Joseph over at JTB Reptiles. When he was on my podcast, he said, the best thing you can do when you're talking about heating and lighting is just forget everything you know. Because one of the things we do as humans is we have these very concrete definitions in our minds of what we think light is and what we think heat is. And then we try to use that framework to interpret it into, or try to use that framework to understand heating and lighting on a deeper level. And it doesn't work that well. So try your best to forget. Just picture it as energy through the spectrum. The longer the wavelengths of, the, of that energy, you're going to get into infrared, and the shorter ones, we're going into ultraviolet. So the confusing thing you might be asking is, well, how can the UVB bulb not be visible light, considering I can see it? And let me be clear, it is still producing visible light. There's absolutely visible light coming off of your UVB bulb, but it is not hitting all of the spectrum of visible light. So what I'll do, I'll place on the screen the spectrum of the UVB bulb, the 6% Arcadia bulb, next to the Jungle Dawn. So you can see the difference of energy that's coming off of the light bulbs. So you can see for the UVB bulb, a lot of it is condensed in those shorter blues and shorter wavelength of light. And we know just by the fact that it produces UVB that there's a bunch of light coming off that bulb that we can't see with our eyes. So we know that it's very far on that short end of the spectrum. And yes, there's a few spikes kind of into the oranges and yellows, but it is not a full spectrum when you compare it to the Jungle Dawn. You can see the Jungle Dawn's curve is giving us energy right through that visible light spectrum. With a peak through the blue, that's why we get that blue, that blue kind of daylight appearance, but you can see it's got a nice wide band all the way from that 400 to 700 range that is giving us that full spectrum of light. So it's really important to realize that just because two bulbs appear the same as far as your eyes are concerned in terms of the color of light, that doesn't mean that they're producing or that they're giving off the same amount of energy or the same type of energy. So yes, the 6% Arcadia bulb and the Jungle Dawn look similar in terms of their color of light, albeit the, the Jungle Dawn is much, much brighter, but they both give off that blue daylight kind of white light. They are very different in terms of the energy that's coming off of the bulb. So I think one easy example with, with this would be if you were 
let, let's say I take my halogen bulb and I turn it down to it just I, I dim it down to like an orangey color and it's just it just barely on and you can see a nice kind of warm orange color. Now, of course, there's some visible orange light coming through there and some reds and whatnot and some yellows. But then if I place my hand in the bulb, I'm going to feel a bunch of heat as well. So that in instantly tells me that that spectrum, that tail is going to be going into the infrared and I'm feeling the warmth from the infrared A and infrared B into my hand or into the palm of my hand. Now you could go find an LED bulb that produces the same color of light. Maybe you find like an orangey yellow LED bulb. You turn that bulb on and you put your hand by it, you're not going to feel the same amount of heat that's coming off that bulb. Why is that? Because the tail isn't going into the infrared wavelengths at all. It is really just producing a spike of visible light in the oranges and in the reds, and that's it. Maybe a tiny bit into the ultraviolet, or no, a sorry, now I'm confusing myself. Maybe a tiny bit into the infrared, but nothing more than just a little bit compared to the halogen bulb, which has a lot of infrared energy coming off it. So you can see that you can have two bulbs that are the same color visually, but are not giving off the same amount of energy. So that is why the, UV, the UVB bulb, although it looks like daylight, it's not giving us that full rainbow spectrum of light that the plants absolutely need to survive because without it, they will die. So I know Arcadia spent a ton of time working on the Jungle Dawn because they had to come up with an LED diode that looked like natural daylight, but also gave off energy through that full spectrum. I don't know how they did it. It's a great piece of technology. I love both of the bulbs that I have. Eventually, I'm sure I'll pick up many more. So hopefully that clears some questions up for you. It shows you kind of how to set it up and what it looks like. And again, go to Mariah's article if you want more detail. And then if you want even more detail, you, you should go pick up John's book, Fire. That goes into far more detail there. Thank you very much for watching the video. If you want to follow me on Instagram, I'll be posting updates about this. This will probably be the last video about this build. It should be pretty much wrapped up at this point. My Instagram is animals at home CA. You can send me a DM on there if you want to say hi. And if you haven't checked out the podcast network, go to animals at home network.com and you can find my show on there, on there as well as Bryce Broom's new show that's just been released. Just two episodes out so far. Animals everywhere. He's talked with some venomous experts as well as breeding West African dwarf crocs. An amazing show. Definitely go check it out. And I will catch you guys in the next video.